you know, our history as Métis people has been one of, uh, you know, uh, very often people will kind of use the terminology, you know, uh, we've been a football between governments and neither side really wanting to deal with us. I, I like the analogy of a hot potato better because then that's been, that's been our, you know, our history. People just, you know, throw you to the other level of government, say you're not our, you know, our issue, we don't need to deal with you on, on a number of uh, fronts. And so this, the, this case will hopefully settle this once and for all. And really, you know, what, what is uh, at heart of the issue is, you know, what government has jurisdiction or legislative authority for, for dealing with Métis people. And, you know, our position has, as within the Métis uh, Nation of Ontario has always been, we're under federal jurisdiction, similar to how First Nations are and similar to how the Inuit are. And so, therefore, we would fall under Section 9124, which, which uh, references um, lands in Indi uh, Indians and land reserved for Indians. And interestingly enough, the, uh, the, the Inuit people um, had to do, take a similar case on in 1939 called Re-Eskimos, where at that point the federal government was saying, no, we don't have uh, jurisdiction or responsibility for dealing with, uh, uh, with the Inuit. Uh, and so in 1939, they took a very similar case on, and, and the courts found, as, as we know uh, they found uh, again here, that um, the federal government indeed had jurisdiction for dealing with Inuit and unquestionably, you know, when Section 35 identifies who the Aboriginal peoples are, the First Nations, the Inuit and Métis peoples, um, then clearly, you know, it, for us it's very clear we, the federal government has jurisdiction for dealing with our issues. And so it's long overdue that we get on and create a negotiations table with the federal government to deal with, uh, with issues of inequality or, or where uh, programs that are available to our uh, other Aboriginal cousins are not available to Métis citizens um, in education. Our children get no funding for post-secondary education, um, whereas there is funding pools for uh, First Nations and Inuit that they can support them so they can go on and get the higher educations. There are a lot of health, uh, uh, health benefits that are available to, uh, to the uh, First Nations and Inuit that are not available to Métis people. And in some cases, these are life and death situations where uh, you know, an elderly person can't afford their meds, um, but yet if they were registered as First Nations, then they would be, those prescription drugs would be covered. And you know, in one case, uh, you know, a witness in Powley gave that testimony. I could either die as a Métis person, or if I register as a First Nation, then my meds <laughs> are paid. So people should not be forced into life and death situations because the government refuses to deal with its responsibilities. Um, We've got a lot of issues on, on the front that we need a government to, to begin addressing and, uh, and not just kicking the can down the road by further adjournments. So our hope is that uh, with this decision, the government will negotiate with Métis people on these issues. Another important file that's just come down is we finally got the clarification from the Supreme Court on, on, on Métis land claims in the Manitoba Métis Federation claim. And clearly there are historic grievances um, in this, this particular case, uh, in the MMF case said, that remain unfinished business. The Crown has an obligation to deal with these promises that were made to Métis people, in that case, to the Métis people in Manitoba. We have similar promises made in Ontario to Métis people, um, and we need a negotiations table. We need a uh, claims process, a Métis claims process, for dealing with those historic grievances that Métis people have. And our hope is that the Daniels decision here will settle that, Clearly we are, the federal government has a jurisdiction and responsibility for dealing with our issues. Um, it's time to, to begin to settle down and begin those negotiations. They will begin addressing these, these uh, serious issues. And we hope that uh, they won't just continue to adjourn it, for, you know, because that just will delay it for another couple of years and just kick the can down the road while these issues pile up, while it affects, has real effect for people, bread and butter issues for people living on the ground that you know, has consequences. And I think that's what's often missed overlooked by, by these cases. People forget that there are real consequences for not dealing with these issues. And so our hope is that, uh, that we will be able to sit down with the federal government and to create these tables for negotiations.